Hello friends, today we'll study about what is the difference between the conductors, insulators and semiconductors in terms of energy. Well, this is an important question for your university exams, so stay tuned. Now, what do you mean by energy bands? Well, energy bands is nothing but as the amount of energy that you would require for an electron to have so that it can conduct electricity. Well, it's too confusing to study this on theoretical aspect. So we'll be following a diagram as you can see in the slide. Here you can see we have three different materials. One is conductor, semiconductor and insulator. Now, what is the common thing that you can observe? The common thing is all of these have conduction band and valence band. Now, what is valence band and what is conduction band? Now, well, you all know that electron does not conduct electricity unless and until it leaves its valence shell and gets out of the electron shell and becomes a free electron. So basically, when the electron is inside a shell or bounded to an atom, it is not entitled to conduct electricity because it is not called as free electron. Once the electron moves out of that zone, it is now then classified as free electron and hence it conducts electricity. Now, so if this is true, how it has been different in metals, which are conductors, semiconductors and insulator. Now, here you can see when electron is in the outermost state or it is bounded to an atom, we call this electron to be in the valenced band zone. Now, what is valence band zone? This is the energy zone wherein the electron is bounded to the atom. Now, if you provide some energy, this electron will get excited and it will move out of that shell and it will move to a higher orbit. If the electron is in the outermost shell, the higher orbit would mean nothing but as escaping that electron out of the valence and being a free electron and hence entering into a conduction band. So basically, you can say that if this is a random atom, and this is the outermost shell and this is the electron I'm talking about. If you give energy to this electron, it will kick out of the last shell and hence it will become a free electron. Well, the point to be noted that if the electron is still under the influence of atom, it is not called as free electron. So, what happens in case of conductor? Well, in case of conductor, you can see the valence band and conduction band are overlapped to one another, which means that it does not matter which band the electron is in. If the electron is in valence band, yet it is about to conduct electricity, and of course, which means the same as it is in conduction band. So, basically, you can say that your valence band and conduction band both overlap in case of conductors and hence this is the only reason we do not require any effort to have electrons pass through a conductor or in other words we do not require any additional efforts for electricity to get passed through a conductor just because the reason your valence band and conduction band overlaps one another. Now what happens in case of insulator? We'll see the insulator first. Now, you all know that insulators are bad conductors of electricity. Why it is said so, we'll be studying out by using this diagram. Now, you can see this is the valence band and this is the conduction band. Now, there's a gap of more than five electron volt. This gap is called as energy gap or band gap. Now, what does it mean? It means that when you want to move an electron from valence band to conduction band, energy required per electron would be of around 5 electron volts. So basically you can say that if you are able to give 5 electron volts energy to an electron, then it can jump from valence band to conduction band. What happens if you are able to provide so much amount of energy to a material like this? Well, if that is the material, it would naturally become a conductor. So basically, insulators are the materials which have high amount of energy gap and band gap which is most or likely equal to be or greater than 5 electron volts. And hence we can say that the current electricity conduction in insulators is very difficult. 
Now, what happens in case of a semiconductor? Well, here a semiconductor is somewhat different. Here you can see this energy gap is approximately equal to 2 electron volts. Well, to be precise, we can say for silicon, this energy gap is nothing but a 0.7 electron volt and for germanium, it is 0.3 electron volts. Now, a question would come, which is better? Well, this is an important question for your viewer. Examiner could ask you, which of the following is the best material for semiconductor? You have silicon, which takes 0.7 electron volts and germanium, which takes 0.3 electron volts. So the answer to the question is silicon 0.7 electron volt. The argument could be the 0.7 electron volt is far greater than what germanium needs. So basically what are these energies? These energies are nothing but as the amount of energy that this electron will take before it begins to conduct electricity. So why silicon is taking more amount of energy yet it is the best semiconductor? Well, this is because of the temperature. Silicon is more resistant to temperature changes than germanium and this is the reason most of the electronic devices are based by using silicon chips. Well, yes, if you are able to maintain the temperatures, of course, germanium is the best because the band gap is less and your devices could be much faster. And hence, in supercomputers, which are kept under controlled temperature conditions, you can use germanium. But if you want to use your handheld devices, your mobile phones, laptops or any other instruments which are kept at normal room temperature, which are prone to various changes in temperature, you have to use silicon. Now, so basically, you can say that in semiconductors, the band gap is achievable. Now, what do you mean by achievable? Well, it means that we can vary the conductivity of the material by pushing some of the electrons from valence band to conduction band and of course withdrawing the electrons from conduction band back to the valence band. So basically as we discussed earlier, we can alter the conductivity of a semiconductor. So this is the only reason. So in a nutshell, here you can see the band gap is zero in conductors. The band gap is minimum in semiconductors where it is wide enough in insulators. So therefore conductors are good conductor of electricity, insulators are bad conductor of electricity and the conductivity of semiconductors could be ranged. Thank you so much for watching this video. For more content, stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.